Martin, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Thank you for your time. Uh, firstly, reflecting on what has been a successful season for the under 19s, what are your thoughts on that as a whole, looking back with, with fond memories, I guess? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think my, my overriding feeling is incredibly proud, really, of, of all the players and the staff for the amount of work that they're putting over the course of the season. Um, humbled to have the platform to work with them every day. Uh, we've got some really wonderful people in the building, as I said, they're players and staff, so it's a great environment for people to come, um, learn, work hard, and um, yeah, over the course of the season, there's been a lot of progress made in, in terms of individual development, so uh, yeah, really pleasing aspects for, for, for all the staff. Can you put that progress, that success down to anything in particular? Is there anything that comes to mind in particular when you think about the growth that we've had, the success that we've achieved? Um, yeah, probably a couple of things. I think first and foremost, um, the culture of the academy, the culture of the football club. Um, we work off three values in particular um, that we, we, we give the players on a daily basis and, and they really bring that to life. Uh, we ask them to be brave, to be humble and be really competitive in everything that we do. And yeah, fortunately for us, um, I think <laughs> as coaches, we, uh, we perhaps think it might be our doing, but I think coaching starts long before you get players in the building and I think the parenting and the guardians of the, the young men that we've worked with this season uh, have done an, a, an outstanding job. I've got children myself and I know how hard it is um, to raise good people. It's a challenge in itself. So for us to have the, the calibre of people, first and foremost, human beings in the building that, that come in and, as I say, want to learn, want to get better um, and take a real keen interest in what we're doing and then really bring that culture to life. That's been evident every single day. Um, Along with some discipline, which I think at times can be a bit of a, a bit of a dirty word in, in, in football and in academies, but um, I think without discipline, it's very difficult to become successful in whatever field that is. Um, but the young the young men that we've worked with on a daily break, daily basis have uh, have really brought that culture to life every single day. We know that the season's not just quite over yet. There's a couple of merit fixtures to be played and another extension to the season, so to speak. You just want to talk us through that and what that entails and how it's going to look. Yeah, so the, the league have obviously decided that um, I think they wanted to get a minimum of 22 league games in across the course of the season, um, which is great experience for the players. Um, with only 10 teams in our league, we've obviously played everybody twice um, and been some really good performances, so much individual development across the course of the season. Um, I think our programme has and always will be an individual development focused approach. Um, and I think there's been you know real evidence of that over the course of the season. Um, yeah, results of, of, of the games are, I'm genuinely honest, we've never talked about one game of, of, of winning. We've never spoke about winning. We've spoke about winning behaviours. We've spoke about being competitive, but it's always been about just getting better um, every single week, trying to improve that little bit individually. Um, and I think collectively the results are there for the players to enjoy more so than the staff. Um, we probably got it wrong, I think, once this season where we, we overemphasised winning. Um, and we only did that in one game and um, we got beat in the Youth Cup. So that was a learning curve for, for us, both as staff and as players. And But either side of that, everything's been around culture, around behaviours. Um, and yeah, the, the league that, that, that we now go into, we have four more games left against four really competitive and really high quality teams in the league. So we know that's going to be really tough. We've got two at home and two away. Um, but as the lads have done all season, they've really embraced challenge. Everything we've thrown at them. Um, they've took it in their stride and, um, and they've grown as a, as a person, I think, all the way through that process. So we look forward to those last four games and, uh, and again, we're just trying to get better every game. On the topic of winning, the last game of the regular season is one that attracted a lot of attention, 10-0 over Mansfield Town. But I guess in line with what you've just been saying there, is that really a result and a consequence of the winning behaviours that you might have demonstrated <coughs> in that game? Was it all down to doing the right things, being ruthless and getting goals rather than getting a win, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. I think it was a, just a game where everything sort of came together in one game, really. And um, we played Mansell so many times and uh, we got so much respect for them. They're such a fantastic outfit. The academy is, is I think it's only going from strength to strength. Uh, really a lot of respect for how they do things. They've got some brilliant staff as well as really talented players. So we knew going into that game, um, the players were made aware. They watched the analysis. A lot of it was player led and they were looking at areas where we were going to have to be mindful of because of their qualities. Um, but as I say, individually in that game, we look a lot at individual learning objectives. Uh, we set challenges um, across the course of the week, both in training and then in the game. And it was just, we were just fortunate on that day. Everything sort of came together. Um, and as you say, the moments that we had in front of goal, we were ruthless. Um, and that links to the to values of being competitive uh, and being humble. Um, we didn't stop at one or two. 
Um, and uh, yeah, the, I suppose the pleasing moment was probably around 70, 80 minutes when we were obviously ahead in the game. Nothing changed. Body language was still there. There was still a cutting edge about us. There was still humility about us. We were still running um, as working as hard as we could. And, and people were just trying to perform to the best of their ability. And um, as I say, it just came together in that one game. It could have happened any other day. We've had days where it's gone the opposite way and we've been, we've been really poor in certain moments. And the players, um, the players have learnt from those experiences as well. But yeah, just one of those days, I think. <coughs> that game, as well as a few more games towards the end of the season, has been played at the Horsfall Community Stadium, Bradford Park Avenue, as will this Friday's game and the merit fixtures against Rotherham United and beyond. What has that been like as an experience for the players playing in a stadium? Been brilliant. Um, yeah, it's been brilliant um, for the staff and the players, really. Um, something different, a little bit of a change. Very appreciative of Bradford Park Avenue allowing us to, to use their facilities because it's fantastic. Um, and, and also the, the people there have, have really been welcoming to get our lads there and playing games. So, um, yeah, I think the players have, have, have welcomed being somewhere different, a different environment, as you say, with a stand. And I think when we look back over the course of the season, we spoke as staff after the Youth Cup experience and obviously been a little bit disappointed when we did go out to a, a really good Oldham team. We asked ourselves the question of had we done enough for staff before then to provide players with the exposure to playing in a stadium um, under that pressure in different environment, under the lights at night time, all these different things that you know a lot of people talk about now as being integral for the development of individuals and um, I think we missed a trick there, we got that a little bit wrong so um, hopefully this exposure playing at Brad Park Avenue and, and more things that we'll be looking to organise in, in the future will prepare players a little bit better for those moments. Mm. And in terms of experiences as well, a free weekend just gone meant a trip down to the Manchester City <laughs> Academy to face a side there. Again, in terms of experiences, what was that like? What did we learn? What did we achieve? Yeah, the experience was, was fantastic. Um, again, many thanks to Man City for having us over there. As everyone knows, world-class facility, world-class players and staff. So um, it was brilliant for us again to do something different, go again to Category 1 Academy. Um, I have to be honest and say we were disappointed on the day. Um, our performance and our culture was not as strong as it has been in previous games. Um, the result is, is not something that I say we, we look at. Um, albeit that there was a, the, the game ended in a draw, but from a development point of view, yeah, the players admitted themselves and there was a lot of discussion on Monday when we watched the analysis back where we fell short culturally in that game and, and that was a little bit disappointing, but again, a learning opportunity for us, just to, you know, for people to, um, to sort of take stock of where we're at, playing against top players. Um, they were younger than us as well, um, but yeah, I thought Man City were, were fantastic on the day and um, as disappointed as I was, great experience as you say for the players to go and see and, and, uh, and experience that. Just wanted to focus on yourself as well, a few weeks now in a new role as head of coaching and player development. What have the, those been like on a personal level for you and what has this season really represented on a personal level for you? Again, one of growth I would assume. Yeah, I mean, it's difficult at the moment because we've not recruited yet to um, for someone to take over in the in the role of, of lead PDP, um, which I have been doing across the course of the season. Um, in terms of me moving across into that role, hopefully that will be soon. So I'm trying to balance the two at the minute. Again, I'm really fortunate to have brilliant staff in the building who are, everyone's really running around while we're short staff to, to cover everything and still provide the players with as much support as we possibly can to give them an opportunity to go earn the pro contracts. Um, I am again in full gratitude for the work that Lewis Nightingale did prior to, to moving on to Liverpool because the foundation that Lewis put in place um, as a head of coaching and as a leader, um, the academy is in a great place moving forward. So for me, I, I hope for that transition will be quite seamless, um, but on, only really because of the people I've got around me and the work that's already been done previously. You mentioned the staff and the support network that you've got around you, people in the academy and in the wider football club who have been involved at the game at all sorts of different levels. How important are those relationships when you speak about a culture and wanting to build something here that the players can follow? How important is the staff, the leadership and the relationships that you carry? Yeah, I think it's, it's integral. Um, I think, you know, for me, coaching football is, is the best job in the world. Um, there's not a day goes by that I don't wake up and jump out of bed to come to work and um, that's not just because the players that you work with but because the people that you're around. Um, we have an academy manager in Neil that um, offers fantastic support to everybody. Um, it gives a lot of autonomy and a lot of trust, uh, makes people feel valued and um, yeah, really encourages people to bring ideas and to express themselves as coaches and as players. So. Uh, when you have that, it's it's a great recipe for everyone else really to bring their own uh, their own spin on things. And then, 
Um, you know, Leanne, <laughs> Leanne, who, who's in the office with us, who uh, I think, yeah, I think the place would fall down without her. To be honest, um, she keeps everyone ticking and keeps everyone up to uh, up to speed on everything that needs to be done. And I think without without people like that, it's, it becomes very difficult and you miss things. Um, so from a player care point of view, she's been brilliant. Um, and then yeah, the full MDT. I'm 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 not just saying it, but we have we have such good staff here um, across the analysis department, um, uh, medical department, the S and C performance everything it's, it really is and then again we're, we're, we're lucky to be at Woodhouse Grove to work with them as well alongside the education side of things as well so you know I genuinely feel that the players are um, appreciative of all the support that they get um, it's the minimum that we can do for them uh, don't get me wrong but I think they're very appreciative of it and I think that's why the culture is so strong that they buy in and trust us that we're all working so hard just to give them that one percent to try and make them a little bit better in all in all facets of, of their development. And just finally, no doubt, everybody will have their fingers crossed for these merit fixtures that we've got coming up. First one against Rotherham United, as mentioned, at Bradford Park Avenue on Friday. But looking back on the season, as we said at the start, reflecting on you know a campaign where I think 14 of the final 16 fixtures of the regular season were, were victories, it's a cause for celebration in itself, isn't it? And while you know these players have the opportunity to be the first Bradford City youth team to win the EFL Alliance League since 13-14, it's easy to, to kind of bypass what we have achieved this season in a way. It is, yeah. Um, but I, I, I have to reiterate, really, the results are, are for the players to enjoy. Um, again, we as staff don't sit down and think we've achieved anything through a, through winning a game of football. And that's with the greatest respect um, to the competition. Um, we want to see culture, we want to see behaviours. That's what we have seen. Um, I have to say, again, mentioning Lewis, that last summer I pitched an idea to Lewis around individual development and... Uh, a real strategic and deliberate way of how I felt that we might be able to work with individuals that completely aligned with the academy um, curriculum and the syllabus and the identity and it was really welcomed again Lewis's leadership skills he welcomed it he embraced it and and all the staff have done as well so the winning across the course of the season for me has been the fruits of, of that work and we've offered some professional contracts out that is ultimately what, what, what we're here to do. That's our role, to make better footballers and better human beings. I think that some of that has been achieved. I still think there's a long way to go. Um, but I am led to believe that uh, we've got some more pro contracts, hopefully on the way, that um, potentially might actually break a, a history, as, uh, sorry, make history and, and break a record in terms of how many pro contracts we're able to offer out this season. So again, if that was to materialise, for me, there's the success. Um, and hopefully those young players that will get an opportunity. We're, we're fortunate that we have a, a CEO and we have an owner that believe in youth. We now have um, you know, good people in the building as well who hopefully will give opportunities to young players and believe in them. Um, and I think that the future for, for a lot of these young lads is, is really healthy and um, I think they can go forward with a lot of optimism for sure.